Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to do a comparison between iCloud Photos and Google Photos, mainly on the sync operation. Now on YouTube, you'll find a lot of videos comparing the feature differences between iCloud Photos and Google Photos, what features Google Photos have, like the magic eraser, stuff like that, and what iCloud Photos have. But what we are going to discuss today is the differences of sync operation. How does these two cloud services sync with your phone? What operations you can do and cannot do on either of these cloud solutions. So let's get started. So let's start with iCloud first. So on iCloud, let's do a simple diagram and try to understand what is the basic difference. How does an iCloud photo storage works? Say this is your iPhone and you have some, so this is your photo application of your iPhone, right? And you have some photos, say you have photo one, you have a photo two, you have a photo three, you have photo four and five. So you have five pictures on your phone and you have say two videos. So this is your normal standard photos application or the gallery application of your phone. Start the sync operation, which means you enable the iCloud storage or iCloud photos sync. Once you do that, the photos on your phone will start getting synced to your iCloud. So how do I validate that? So if you just visit iCloud.com and then open the photos section, something like this where I am on iCloud.com and if I am currently on the photo section, if you see my library, it's completely empty because I do not have a single photo on my iCloud. So if you're doing this for the first time, you're enabling iCloud photos for the first time, there's something you will see where you do not have a single photo. So what is happening is when in iCloud.com you have this photo section, this is the photo section of iCloud.com, the photo library, right? When you turn on sync, all these photos will start transferring to iCloud, which means it will upload to cloud. And so you, here you have five photos and two videos. So all this five photos will get synced here and the two videos will get synced here. So P1 to P5, whatever photos you have and V1, V2, whatever the two videos you have, all will get synced to iCloud photo library. Now remember, this is a two way sync. This is a two way sync. So what does this two way sync means? Which means at any point of time, your phone and your iCloud will always be in sync and this is vice versa. Which means if I take another photo, say P6. This will automatically get uploaded to cloud. So P6 now got uploaded. So at any point of time, whenever I'm taking a new photo, it will go, go and sync back to iCloud and vice versa. So if I upload a photo directly to my iCloud.com, so I go to iCloud.com and upload a photo, say P7, this photo will start reflecting on your phone as well. So at any point of time, whatever photos you have on your iCloud, the same photos you will see on your phone as well. So at any point of time, your number of photos your count of photos on iPhone is equal to your count of photos and videos on iCloud.com. And this is true for any device, any iOS device. It doesn't matter whether it's a Mac, it's an iPhone, it's an iPad, right? So suppose you have two, uh, two iOS devices. So you have an iPad as well, right? So you buy a new shiny iPad and you already have suppose some photos in your iCloud, it is synced to your iPhone, beautiful. Now, when you go and enable iCloud photos in your iPad, all this from cloud will start getting pulled up. So if you have photos from P1 to P7, all will get pulled up. The videos you have will get pulled up. So now you have the same replica copies of photos and videos on your iPad. Now, once you use this, the advantage of this one is everything is in sync. Your uh, phone, your iPad, your laptop, everything is in sync. Your iCloud.com, everything is in sync. The disadvantage is if you go and delete one photo. So if I go and delete, say, P5 from this one. Say P5 is deleted. Then this will also get deleted from your web. This will also get deleted from your iPad. So from all devices, this photo will get deleted. So if you are using iCloud photos, if you're using iCloud to sync your photos, do not delete something from your phone if you do not plan to permanently delete it. 
because if you delete from one device it will get deleted from all devices so if you want to empty out space on your phone say your phone is going out of capacity do not go and delete photos with the on, on your phone there is a separate option for that so now we go to the second separate option what if you have said 10,000 photos and say you have 1200 videos and your iPhone is probably a 120 GB of iPhone right so how will you how will your phone store so many photos and videos so if you keep on taking photos and videos on your phone obviously over the time these photos and videos will accumulate and your iPhone will run out of storage so how do you avoid that problem so there is an option for that which is called as optimize storage and this is a very important point or very important feature on any of the iOS devices or even Mac so what this does is it will go and convert every photo on your phone into a smaller version let's say you have a photo p1 which is a 5 mb size it's a 4k photo with a lot of colors a lot of resolution a lot of information and it's a 5 mb photo now when you turn on optimized storage what it will do is this photo will get converted into a very small uh, i would say thumbnail kind of a thing and that thumbnail will be stored on your phone so this 5 mb might get converted into a 200 kb file which is a very tiny size of the photo and this tiny image will be stored on your phone so this photo will get replaced this p1 which was initially a 5 mb will get replaced with a smaller p1 and this will be stored on your phone so one by one every photo in your library so if you have 10,000 photos in your library every photo will get converted into a tiny version of the uh, into a tiny image and overall this will drastically reduce the size of the photo so example when i was using icloud i had over 300 gb of photos and videos and when i did the optimized storage and let it run for a couple of days my final size was less than 8 gb in size so that is how much it can reduce so it can go from 10x to even 20x depending on how many videos and photos you have generally for photo i've seen the reduction is like from uh, mbs to kbs for videos again videos can be extremely large you can have gbs one video with like two three five gb but then it's a thumbnail is like more or less same size a few kb so the more videos you have you will see a, a major difference or drastic reduction in the size so generally people have stored like 50,000 70,000 photos on their phone and still they're able to use a 128 gb of phone and that's uh, and that's amazing right because you can have this the entire library with you at any point of time with a smaller resolution version and still you can use a smaller size iphone so this is the idea of optimized storage so if you have an iphone with a smaller storage and your entire library is much bigger in size this is the option you need to enable sorry this is the option you need to enable and what this will do is as i mentioned convert all the photos and videos into a smaller version and that will remain on your phone at all points of time so what's the catch the catch is since your photo is now only 200 kb when you tap the photo by default it will load the 200 kb photo it will pull the actual resolution photo from the cloud and show it to you so for a minor split second you will see a lower resolution photo and then it will convert into a higher resolution photo now the problem is if you are in a place where you do not have any internet connection you will still see a lower resolution photo because it cannot pull the latest photo from icloud so it needs internet connection to pull out the original videos or the photos from cloud so any point of time you want to see the full resolution you will need to be connected to an internet it could be data or wi-fi it doesn't matter right once you uh, once you've seen the photo and it goes away eventually it will again be reduced to a smaller version so this continues continuously happens in the background it automatically happens and uh, i think ios takes skills of like what photos will be lower resolution what photos it will keep higher resolution i think the recent photos it will keep a higher resolution rest everything it will convert into a smaller resolution and that magically happens behind the scenes you do not have to worry about that like how the conversion is happening how many are getting converted but first time you enable optimized storage and depending on your library size it may take quite a few days even to optimize the entire library so 
make sure you keep it charged you keep it connected to wi-fi and eventually it will convert all the photos it might take a couple of days don't worry about it so if you have like 80 gb of photos and videos it eventually it will get into a smaller size so that is how the icloud storage works so for using iCloud storage, two points you need to remember if you have a smaller capacity phone and the library is larger, you need to enable this optimized storage option. Do not delete any photo from the iPhone if you don't plan to actually delete that photo because if you delete, this will get synced to your cloud and everything will get deleted. So the photo will get deleted from all the places. And any edits you do in any of the photos anywhere will get synced back. So if I'm editing say P7, the same edit will get applied to the P7 on iPad. The same edit will get, uh, get applied to P7 on a, um, iCloud.com. So everything is synced to each other. So that's the beauty of iCloud. At the same time, if you want to delete something, it will get deleted where that's the disadvantage. So you can't just um, keep your gallery or your photos application empty and have everything in the iCloud.com. You can't do that. So you always have a smaller version of your um, smaller copy of the photos and videos on your phone. That's iCloud.com. Let's move to Google Photos. So now let's move to Google Photos. So let's take the same scenario where you have an iPhone. This is the photos application of your iPhone. And say you have a couple of photos. Say you have P1, P2, P3, P4. You have a couple of photos. You have a couple of videos. So you have say four photos and two videos. Now, when you install Google Photos, log into your account and switch on the sync, it will start backing up everything to Google Photos. So this is your photos.google.com, right? So you go to photos.google.com if you want to see what is in your cloud. You have to log in with your Gmail account, whatever account you have. This, all these photos and videos will start getting uploading, uh, will start getting uploaded and you will have the same versions in Google Cloud. Now, the advantage of Google Cloud is this is not a two-way sync. It is not a two-way sync, which means it's a one-way sync. So it only gets uploaded, but any changes you do in the cloud will remain in the cloud depending on where you're doing the edit, which means on your iPhone, if you delete this V2, this will get deleted from iPhotos, right? It's downwards, it's true. So here the actions get replicated, which means if you download anything, if you delete anything from Google Photos, this gets deleted. But if you go and delete from here, after the upload is complete, if I delete anything from here, this will not affect Google Photos. Anything which is already uploaded to Google Photos will never get deleted. The only option of deleting that is you go to photos.google.com or you log into the Google Photos app and you go and delete it. Any changes you do in your Photos application like deletion from the Photos application will not get deleted from Google Photos. So if you are using Google Photos, you can just keep clearing this Photos app you can keep clearing all the photos app. You can keep it empty any point of time and still have every photo in your Google library. So if you're using Google photos, I think what you should do is use this app as the primary for photos app for you. You stop going to this for photos app at all. At any point of time, you want to do any edits, go to Google photos app, do the edit. You, are, you have taken a photo, it will get automatically uploaded. You want to do any edits, go here. You want to delete something, go here. You want to... Uh, share something go here so do everything from the google photos app just forget that you actually have a photos app here right so only reason you want to come back here is if you want to clear your library your iphone storage is getting full you come back you clear everything done this will not affect your google photos so you can have hundreds of thousands of photos in your google photos and your icloud uh, iphone library or iphone photos can be empty with zero photos that is the beauty of google photos Another advantage is you can go to photos.google.com on your web, any browser, everywhere, you can access those photos. Your entire library is accessible at all points of time, right? Same for if you have another device, say you have an iPad and you have the same Google Photos app. Now, whatever photos you have here will not get synced to your photos library. You need to go to the Google Photos app. 
google photos application on ipad so this google photos app should be your only place where you visit so once you switch to google photos just use that application for everything whatever edits you do on google photos application will reflect in the photos application but your not your original photo library so you should never visit your photo library just use the google photos app that is enough for your uh, syncing doing all the edits and everything you need right this is the primary difference between google photos and icloud icloud everything remains synced across all devices all the time it's a two-way sync google photos is one-way sync which means the upload happens whenever you're making any change the upload always happen but your actions on google photos on your phone the deletion actions are always replicated which means if you delete something from google photos it gets deleted from the library but this action is not replicated so if you are deleting from the iphone Mainly when I'm saying action, I'm talking about delete action. When I'm deleting from the iPhone, it will not delete from the Google Photos. Thanks for watching.